Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to remind you once again that the church has purchased these wonderful missiles. And uh, if you are one who likes to follow along to the readings or see melody lines for some of the songs, things like that, uh, they are out. There's a, a rack kind of by the front door there. I think there's one by this door just on the outside and one right over inside the church by that door. So if you'd like to go grab one of those now, wonderful. And if uh, we, we have, if you skip to the first slide, if our songs are in the, uh, the book, we'll put the song number right next to the song up there just so you can quickly jump to that if you'd like to. All right, thank you. And once again, good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Life Parish. Please stand and join us in our first song, our opening song, Emmanuel. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Tecanitis, and Lysatius was tetrarch of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went through the whole region of Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Second week of Advent, and uh, here we are. Uh, we're getting to the middle uh, of this uh, sacred time of year. And as we prepare ourselves to receive our Lord as fully as possible uh, during the Christmas season, which we're not quite there yet, right? Just a quick reminder, right? We're going step by step here uh, through each of the Sundays, drawing us deeper and deeper into the mystery. So. And just as a reminder, since I wasn't here for the Sunday Masses last week, uh, a reminder of what was the first week calling us to. The first week was really calling us to the absolute need for Christ to come. And why is that? It's because as we see throughout all of salvation history, starting with Adam and Eve, coming all the way up through the time of Jesus Christ, and even to today, humanity cannot help itself but to make cities of men 
instead of cities of God. Simply meaning, in the city of God, I love God above all things, uh, even to the contempt of my very self, if so, if needed, and uh, in the city of man, to the love of myself, to the contempt of God. God saw that we can't help ourselves but to do that, right? Regularly do it every day. I'll be the first to admit it. So he's going to help us out. He will build the city of God. He will build his church, right? So that's kind of the 30,000 foot overview. Why is Christ coming? Because we're not very good at following him. <laughs> we're not very good at establishing the kingdom of God here on earth or of living it out ourselves. And so for that reason, we were going to be condemned, all of us, for all time. And God didn't want that. So he came to perfect our human nature. So he does it, then he offers us into it, and we are always welcome into it so long as we're willing to seek forgiveness and conversion. So long as there's always a repentance, we are welcome into that. There is nothing that can't be forgiven except for the sin against the Holy Spirit, which is simply saying either I have no sin, which is a lie, we all have sin, or I do not need God's forgiveness and I can simply forgive myself and I'm a good person going on through this world. If that were true, Christ wouldn't have had to have come in the flesh, or at least he wouldn't have come in the flesh in the way in which he decided to do it. Okay, that's step one. Okay. Step two, second Sunday. And what are we reading? In particular, in our gospel and in our second reading, one of the things that's not readily apparent in St. Paul's uh, letter to the Philippians is that he's currently sitting in jail. They take out that one verse there. I don't know why they do that. But they took out one of the verses, and it's the one where he's sitting in jail. And he's writing about all of these glorious things. And I think that's an incredibly important line in this reading. I think it's kind of the key that unlocks everything he's trying to teach them. Seems to me he's at peace, yet he's sitting in jail. Seems to me there's nothing that's going to stop him from preaching the gospel, even though he's sitting in jail. And he's encouraging them to increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception, to discern what is of value so that you might be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Why is this so important? It's so important, my friends, because we can quickly lose sight of what the gospel truly is, and we can quickly turn it into a gospel of prosperity where I think that Christ came so that now my life here on earth will be full of happiness. Well, that's not the case. Look at the example of St. Paul. It doesn't matter wealth, health, popularity, whatever it is. Those things are not the reason why Christ came. Right? He came that we might have peace in our hearts. He came that we might have hope for eternal life. That we truly can be saved. That's the gospel. So the question is, how do we do that? And I believe that St. John the Baptist, remember Christ himself says, no one has been, ever been greater no man has ever been greater that has been born of woman than St. John the Baptist. No one. So that means we should probably take a look at him and see what it is that he was doing that was so great, which really wasn't all that much. All John the Baptist did was level the mountains that would prevent him from getting to his God, and he filled in all of the valleys that would present, prevent him from getting to his God and he made the way straight. Moderation. An understanding of what's important. Knowing that this body's going to die and it doesn't matter. But that my soul will live forever. That's what John the Baptist shows us. That's exactly what he shows us. And that's what God's asking. When he's talking about leveling the mountains and filling in the valleys, my friends. Stop and consider for a moment as we're going through Advent here. Where are the places in my life where I build up mountains? 
right? And by mountains, I mean, where are those places where I'm finding enjoyment in life to the point where I'm forgetting God, to the point where I'm so happy I don't need God? Is it in wealth? Is it in health? Is it in popularity? Because when those things are good, we can frequently, very often, forget about God. And so it's this mountain that we place between him and us. And we're not strong enough to simply climb that by ourselves, right? And so how do we tear that down? Well, we tear that down by growing in virtue. Well, how do we grow in virtue? Well, stop and consider any of uh, those things that would keep us from God, right? Uh, any of the great vices, anything of pride or of lust or of greed, gluttony, right? Where are those places where I find either so much enjoyment in myself or so much enjoyment in creatures or created things? And those are the places where I have to ask for God's grace and I have to uh, start to try to temper those. I need to start to bring those down so that the path can start to be made level. Likewise, where are the valleys in my life where I can lose sight of God because I'm in a place of desolation or of sadness because my life isn't going exactly the way I wanted or the way in which I planned? And I start to think, well, maybe there is no God. Or if there is a God, he doesn't really care. How do I start to fill those in? Well, I start to fill those in by going back to my baptism, by going back to the sanctifying grace that was given me, by going back and asking to grow in those virtues of faith and hope and charity. That is the foundation. And we cannot build unless we have a foundation. Remember, building the city of God, not the city of man. And so never be confused, my brothers and sisters. The gospel, literally the good news, is not that this life is going to be perfect, but it is the promise that there will be a life after this that is, but only if we're willing to come to a place of repentance. If I think I have no need for confession, or that I can put it off even after I've committed serious sin. I'm fooling myself. If I think I have no need or I have an excuse to not come to Sunday Mass, anything, I'm fooling myself. God's not asking it of us except only in the part in way in which he's saying, you can choose me or not. That's what he's saying. You can choose it or not, but in rejecting the sacraments and in rejecting the precepts of the church, we're rejecting God. In accepting them, we're accepting him. Right? That's step one. And that's what John the Baptist is trying to teach us. And so, my friends, as we do come forward to approach our Lord in this Eucharist, we're seeking to do so with hearts filled with peace. See, that's where we get confused. We look at the fruits of the Spirit. We look at the fruits of the life that Christ wants us to have. And we think that's the, the first step. That's not the first step. That's the result of admitting that I'm a sinner. That's the result of admitting that the things of this world cannot make me happy. Moms, dads, brothers, sisters, sons and daughters. They will not bring you the peace that you desire. But God can. He absolutely can. And so, my friends, if we desire peace in the world, if we desire peace in our church, we must first seek for that peace for ourselves. And we do that by leveling the mountains, filling in the valleys, and simply coming to before our Lord in all humility, saying, Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me a sinner.
Now rising, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Having heard God's word, we now present our needs before him with confidence in his love and his mercy. That the church throughout the world may faithfully and joyfully call upon all nations to prepare the way of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments may be inspired by the words of the prophets to promote justice, mercy, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may bring about effective repentance from the sin of abortion and the gift of healing to those wounded by it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and lonely may enjoy the consolation of the presence and love of family, friends, and the wider Christian community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers through the prayer line and the prayer basket, and for those who have died and for those who grieve them, that they may find comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty Father, in your great love and mercy, we ask that you would hear and answer our prayers in accord with your most holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. me. 
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have a few announcements uh, this week. We celebrate uh, the feast of the Immaculate Conception of our Blessed Virgin Mary. And so, uh, a day of obligation and so on uh, here at Spirit of Life on Tuesday, December 7th, so that would be the vigil. We will have a Mass here at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesday, the 7 a.m. and the 9 a.m. And then at St. Anthony on Wednesday, uh, the day of, there will be a Mass at 7 p.m. Uh, the parish office and outreach program will also be closed on that Wednesday. Uh, next weekend, there's a retirement fund that will be brought up uh, for the religious on the 11th and 12th, and so envelopes are in the gathering space if you're able and willing to help uh, with that. And uh, I think we lost an door on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and so we're looking for somebody to fill that spot. And so if you've kind of felt the tug on your heart, well, here's a, a loud, strong calling. Uh, from our Lord. There's an open spot here where we really do need somebody, at the very least, even if it's for a short time, if you'd be willing to help us out, okay? And then uh, Ishkan Ministries uh, will be selling textiles, jewelries, uh, jewelry and rosaries after Mass today. And so uh, at least just to maybe check, stop by, check them out, and see if there's something there. I'm sure there's plenty of things uh, for gift, Christmas gifts and those sorts of things if you're preparing for that. So thank you so much. Know of our prayers for you all, and please keep us in all of yours. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. Thanks.
Thank you, Maggie. I don't know, I don't, I just like the music, so, okay. Did you?